Okay, everyone. Uh, I think we're about ready to get started. Uh, thank you, uh, everybody, for attending today. Today's webinar is titled Increase the Effectiveness of Your Cybersecurity Education Program with Proofpoint Security Awareness Training. Um, before we begin, if you have any questions uh, during the presentation, please use the chat box and we will answer your questions either during or after the presentation uh, as appropriate. Um, can we get the next slide? Thank you. So, um, who are uh, so? Before we get started, so this presentation is on Proofpoint's amazing solutions. But first, uh, who is CDW? So, we are the leading IT solutions and services partner, integrating and managing technologies to help our customers achieve their outcomes. And how did we get there? Uh, we got there. Um, so, CDW founded in 1994 by Michael Cranzi. Uh, we went public in 93, uh, important acquisitions in 2003, uh, CDW acquired Micro Warehouse, uh, entering the Canadian market and becoming CDW Canada. Uh, we went private again, went public again. Um, in 2015, we acquired Kelway in the United Kingdom, which greatly expanded our global footprint, giving us access into the uh, UK, European and Asian markets. Uh, 2015, we exceeded 15 billion in sales, became Fortune 200 in 2018. 2019, we acquired Scalar Decisions, which was Canada's leading services, IT services and solutions provider at the time, uh, making us now an incredible powerhouse. So what does that bring to you? Next slide, please. So um, it gives you experience you can trust. Um, as I mentioned, CDW globally is a Fortune 200 company. We rank number three in the global 500 rank of IT uh, in the IT services industry. With over a quarter uh, million customers served by 9,400 co-workers globally. Specific to Canada, uh, next slide please. Specific to Canada, we have over 900 co-workers in nine offices across the country. Uh, of that specifically, uh, we have almost 300 integration technology services coworkers. And what does that mean for you? That means we have over 90 customer facing security professionals with almost 200 staff on the back end to support that both in delivery uh, and in other support services. CDW Canada generating over 1.2 billion in revenue a year, making us the largest services and solutions provider in Canada and your number one choice uh, for all of your IT needs. So I, I don't want to take up too much more time here. I'm going to hand everything over to Bill Hallett, who is the Product Channel Manager for Security Awareness Training for Proofpoint. Bill, take it away. Thank you very, very much, Owen. I am excited and very happy to be here. I appreciate the invite and uh, the registration looked great. So everybody in, uh, on the line in Canada, I'd like to initially extend a thank you. I saw some healthcare uh, uh, folks on the line too. So as we go through this uh, COVID scenario globally, um, I can't appreciate and extend my appreciation for the frontline folks and any other folks who have family members, whether it's healthcare related or uh, critical uh, folks help in Canada and the United States run. Thank you for that first and foremost. On the line, uh, I also have Margaret Moyle, if I can introduce our team very quickly. She's our, your uh, channel account manager for the, the CDW team in Canada who can support any needs and questions you might have. From Proofpoint, we have a couple of folks from our uh, Proofpoint security awareness team that is based in Pittsburgh, Vince Gillardi and uh, Tom Hanna. And uh, myself, Bill Hallett, I'm based in Pittsburgh from Legacy Wombat, which we'll talk about in a second. And not to minimize Margaret and Vince and the rest, but most importantly, Aaron Brown, who is one of the managers from our customer success management team. We're going to talk a lot about those resources as a differentiator or resource for you to make uh, your security awareness journey really effective. What that team does is uh, really a, a um, strategic resource for you that is a name dedicated resource here in Pittsburgh, dedicated to the Proofpoint security awareness tool. They set up uh, strategic uh, strategy calls at the beginning of your implementation and are dedicated through the life of your uh, agreement with, uh, with Proofpoint too. So, um, he's going to absolutely chime in, and you'll see how that is a really, really good resource for you, too. So, and Aaron has been with us for a long time. He's pretty much seen it all, all the successes and hurdles that customers go through. So, um, very quickly, Wombat was a, um, a fully functioning global uh, leader in the security awareness space. We started probably about 14 years ago out of Carnegie Mellon. So, 
Uh, we had a big emphasis on the training side, not just the assessments, you know, of, of fishing and th things like that, but really a focus on adult learning principles. And you'll see that uh, I'll give you an overview in this presentation today too. And it's a, it's kind of a differentiator for us, it's just a different approach. And um, then we were acquired two years ago in March and by Proofpoint, and I'll tell you that story and how the power of using Proofpoint's um, threat intel from an email security company, how we uh, dovetail that into the security awareness products and how that has really affected the game changer too. So the objective today is give you an overview in two sections, as Owen mentioned, uh, we're going to talk about increasing the effectiveness of security awareness. We're going to do that in the setup and prep of a security awareness before you even launch the uh, uh, portfolio or the program for your end users and start fishing them and assessing them, for instance. And that's where the CSM and, and Aaron Brown's team really comes in. And then the second part of that, as I just mentioned, that proof point threat intel and how we leverage that. So here's some discussion points that we'll go through. We're going to discuss some of those elements for a successful uh, program. We're going to review Proofpoint's threat intel resources for you because I really don't want this to be a big sales presentation. We rolled it out to you folks as customers as a resource, especially in these times. Um, Proofpoint is extremely well uh, positioned now because we see north of 20% of the global email. So we have a very unprecedented look into emerging persistent threats that are coming in from all kinds of different countries. And what we're seeing now is not necessarily a, a volume increase in threats that are coming to your end users. However, very specific focuses on the COVID and I'll show you a couple examples. I'll show you a couple of resources. So really that's the message I wanna to get today. And then you'll see our approach related to that too. So we're gonna talk about assessing your end users vulnerability and those different assessments way beyond just sending phishing emails out, especially in these times, we're gonna talk about how the specific training can be maybe more effective to help them as your end users are working from home both in their professional life and uh, their personal life as well too. So I really wanna convey those resources for you as well. And then using that number one threat, threat vector being email to educate and protect your end users and protect that data. So very quickly, before we dive into that, I wanna give you some context around Proofpoint and what they, what they do. Uh, I think some of you are current Proofpoint customers. Some of you may not be, um, but maybe know the name. But however, when I put it in context of Bill Hallett, when I ask people what they know of Proofpoint or what their view of Proofpoint is, a lot of times they say, hey, you guys are a great email security, the number one email security company in the world, and you have uh, you can fish people and you have training modules. Yes, that's very true. However, it's a lot more than that. So there's a lot of things on this page. Um, the main takeaway and the kind of the so what is that we define ourselves as a security and a compliance company fully comprehensive, well-rounded. We have over 20, probably 22 products now in the security and compliance world. So I'll direct your attention to about 10 o'clock, right in the middle of that dark blue on the top left screen that says email security. That is really our core from email, uh, secure email gateway and our protection, and then tap and trap. And I'll talk a little bit about that, but those are the really the targeted attack protection tools and the remediation tools that is really our view into what threats are coming into you as an organization and who they are going to and monitoring the emerging threats throughout the world based on our, uh, as I mentioned before, over 20% of the global email traffic. Then we'll go into how we use that, how it integrates into. So that's just a visual to give you a, a more of a context on the, the bigger proof point story. So with that being said, I just mentioned some really very critical resources that you can use outside of this kind of workshop presentation. Um, there, these are some blogs and Twitter updates. Sherrod the Grippo, that era, uh, at Sherrod underscore IM is our uh, senior director for our, our advanced persistent threat team. She is a wealth of knowledge and I can't stress enough to get all, go onto our website as a resource or, and I'll send this, this, uh, this deck out uh, after this too, so you'll have that too. She tracks all those emerging threats, not only tracks them, but identifies them as they come from hostile countries, hostile financially backed uh, resources as well too. So this is what we are tracking for you as, as uh, customers and non-customers right now too. Ryan Caliber is a senior VP of our um, uh, strategy, cybersecurity strategy. 
and then also uh, that thread insight as a general knowledge. So those are all on our website, but I'll have these links for you too. I can't stress enough to, to tap in and check some of those out because that gets into a lot more specific threats that we, we I, I just frankly don't have time to cover today, but I, I would love to do that. So those are there as well. Here's a couple examples of that. Um, this is a statement from the Wall Street Journal about, I just mentioned a couple uh, minutes ago that we don't necessarily see this huge, huge increase of volume of packs but the specificity and the focus around the COVID environment right now. This is an actual screenshot um, from one that we pulled out of the wild from our email security tools. And you can see it's around the World Health Organization. This, these were some of the initial emerging threats that we saw. However, now they have even um, morphed into as the US government. Um, and if uh, Canada is doing this, the same for some stimulus and aid to small businesses, uh, they're rolling out payments, uh, so the the uh, templates are even evolving around that. Whereas, you know, information around your uh, uh, subsidy and, and aid payment as we get through this COVID environment. So these are all on those those websites, and there's a webinar that covers a lot of those things. So great, great resources there. Okay, so now for the material for today. This I mentioned first part. What should you look at even before you? Uh, launch a security awareness program. We're going to talk about building an effective security awareness training program. We're going to talk about helping you to create buy-in and access right from the start so you don't just all of a sudden turn it on and start phishing everybody and everyone's mad and kind of pissed off and you stub yourself in the toe. So there's some key elements and some of you probably have been through this already. I'm going to give you a general overview and my point today is I'm going to hit on our highlights where we really see people being successful and where we see people kind of have trouble and fail, if that's not the right word, but you know, have, have difficulties. But please understand that Aaron's team is there to help you through these all these stages that you'll see in the next couple of slides. We're not gonna go into all of detail. I'm just gonna get a couple of highlights, get them on your radar screen and just know that that resource is there for you from the Proofpoint team to help you. Goal number three, obviously, is take a continuous approach with measurable results. And you'll see the, the uh, reporting and measurement tools that we have. Security awareness, understanding your mission. Obviously, that's with any kind of project, you're going to define that, right? Sounds basic, but this is going to be a review of some basic key elements of an effective program. You'll see some of these ones highlighted in, in yellow as we go through these. Advanced discussion with stakeholders is always uh, a key to this, too. Um, I always say, you know, understanding the why. Help your end users understand the why. Uh, we've seen that a lot of times when people will turn on the thing, they'll either send a knowledge assessment or a phishing campaign and people click on something and you're, you have a hornet's nest to deal with. So if people understand what you're trying to do, and a lot of these has to do with making them or helping the end users understand that they are part of the security of the company. I look at it as two different things. If you define your objective for your program, some companies and some organizations are in the phase where they just need the compliance um, in regulated industries, and that is perfectly fine. They need to Test their people and assess them and fish them occasionally and get them some training. Maybe it's on an annual or biannual uh, method. Some are really, especially over the last couple of years, they've really adopted this to be a critical, crucial part of behavior change and cultural change within the organization. And that's a very critical point to help your, under, your end users understand their part in it. And it's not just IT's problem. I admit, I used to think that as well. I spent seven years with AT&T. This is an example before I joined uh, Wombat Technologies, you know, several years ago, and I thought the same thing. I'm like, oh, I got to watch a training video, and IT has all the security. My mindset has changed, obviously, too. So this is a key thing that that we can help you with the, that best practice in getting that message. So goals and mission statement. Um, some common things we look at is indicators dec decreasing click rates. Obviously, that's one that probably everybody knows if you're familiar with phishing campaigns. Um, we're also going to look at managed increase in reported malicious, malicious phishing emails. And Aaron, if you want to jump in with any examples here too, but we want to see those click rates go down and the managed increase in reported malicious phishing emails go up. So you're, that's what's telling you is that um, people are clicking on emails less, obviously, but they're also identifying and more tuned into what could be a possible malicious email. And we have tools in there to manage that process so your IT and security teams aren't completely unnecessarily overwhelmed. Um, but those tools are in place to manage that too. And I've mentioned a couple of times, not shoot yourself in the foot. Then also, 
how do you want to approach this once your program is up and running? This is a very, very vital conversation at last point, carrot versus the stick. This comes up every time, every deployment we do, every kind of workshop we do. How do you want to do it? Do you want to reward people for uh, clicking on things or do you want to have a punitive things? And I, it's, I've never found a better <laughs> word to define this other than it depends. It really does based on your culture. Um, if you're in pharmaceuticals and you have people's lives at stake and people make mistakes, you might want to take a more punitive approach so people understand the severity and, and what's at stake. If it's a different culture, maybe you want to set up from some friendly competition in between um, between groups, things like that. So it's a it's a different approach to that too. But all of those things are in best practice manuals, and the CSM team will help talk about that, help the communications to the stakeholders and the end users define how you want to do that. Um, and if emphasize benefits as you're looking at positioning your program for buy-in for everyone. You want to look at emphasizing the benefits over the features. Not that, hey, we have this phishing tool. There's tons of phishing tools out on the on the market now, and that's great. Um, and I'll show you a little bit later. We're, we're so far beyond that concept. And it's a great, great um, exercise to go through because it's, it's a tried and true proven method to keep people aware and on their toes, right? Um, but you want to look at what the benefits are, what the behavior change, the education. We get into a lot of like, this is going to help impact your end users out of work as well, too. So not just in um, in the um, uh, in the uh, workplace. It's going to help their uh, folks outside, and a lot of people will take this some of those training modules home and let their spouses and kids uh, go through some of the training modules as well. So some other things to consider. So being pre uh, prepared to present key deliverables and timeframes, and don't forget accountability. That all it is is. How effective is our training position? So we'll do a baseline with you and then track that over time as you go through your continuous uh, training methodology. So just a couple of things to consider. Again, we're going through this quickly. Can't reemphasize enough. I'll say this several more times that we're here to help you through these concepts. Okay, identify additional stakeholders uh, to, uh, and build allies, end user, end users, end users. Um, the understanding of why, so they're bought in and changing that mindset, like we talked about before, not only being, um, so leading control of the conversation, uh, be an active listener, take into consideration, you want to look at people that will be opponents to you, as well as uh, the friendlies in your organization. It's almost more important to know who's going to be an adversary to you to, to nip those in the bud and take care of that stuff before the first phishing email or uh, assessment goes out. So be specific as to what you're asking and provide as much detail as possible too to really back that up. And I'll show you some resources to help with metrics and numbers to help those people understand that the end user is a critical part of, the, uh, of this um, uh, effort as well. End users allies. I know I'm being a little bit re repetitive, however, that's intentional too, because I can't stress that enough. Why end users uh, matter? And I'll show you some metrics here. So when you're gonna launch your, well, um, yeah, sorry, uh, that's coming in a couple slides here. So just remember this point, why end users matter. These metrics, we have some really, really um, industry accepted reports that go out every year called State of the Fish, uh, and then end user risk report as well too. These are dynamic, fantastic resources to use when conveying your message. So when you're getting ready to launch your program. So establish baselines. Key, obviously, everything you want to measure success, you have to have a baseline. So show why you need training, backed by internal stats. This is something else that CSM team can come out, whether you do an initial phishing program to establish a baseline. We also have another assessment that is more of a knowledge-based assessment, and I'll show you that kind of in the second half when we look at our approach. It really says um, there might be 20 questions on a certain threat topic that really gives you the 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 core understanding of the end users and what they really know, what they really don't know about certain threat vectors versus did they click on something or did they, they not? And I'll talk a little bit about the, the differences in that coming up here in a couple minutes. Um, identify key areas of focus and attack the biggest problems first. We have a comprehensive list of questions that a lot of companies use now um, to say, just do a general overview. And it kind of covers probably 35 to 40 different threat vectors from dangerous URLs to malicious, uh, specific uh, malicious URLs to social media, to mobile device usage, to working outside the office. 
And for customers who are just embarking on this and say, yeah, I know we're getting fish, but I also want to see where else we are weak and what my end users know and what they don't know. This is an extremely effective tool to say, okay, we want to start educating them on URLs and email and how not to click on stuff. But I also want to see where else we need to think about educating our end users. If I have mobile Salesforce, maybe I need to look at a second phase of working outside the office or, or public Wi-Fi, things like that too. So it's a good ground uh, groundwork to, to get a baseline, but also to build a training plan over the next couple of years, right? And to have values to measure against your organization as, a, as it progresses too. So baseline is extremely important, like I just said. Right? All right, this VAP report. This is the first embarkment for today's conversation on the integration of why Proofpoint acquired Wombat in the first place. This was about a four year process uh, to do the acquisition. They looked at uh, several of our key competitors uh, in the process. And when they looked at our platform, how integrated and mature it was, the VAP report is what Proofpoint really saw what they could bring to the table to integrate. And what that is, and I'll show you visually, but while we're talking about it right here, is a very attacked person report. This intel will sit in the email stream and it can identify what actual real world threats are coming into your organization and more importantly, who they are going to. So it identifies your very attacked people. Wombat could not do that in the past because we didn't sit in the email stream. We weren't an email security tool. We were an education platform and an assessment platform. Proofpoint's core products, along with all those other ones I showed you, the three key ones are that pro tap and trap and that tap that targeted attack protection is what builds that information for you too. So you can identify that whether you're a customer or not through different methods and I'll show you that but just I wanted to introduce this as a concept first and I'll build this story as we go through the rest of this. Okay so you have measurable results now what you got to reassess your training curriculum. Uh, we recommend we talk we call it a continuous methodology. We you know say this is these times are a little different because we've kind of pulled back on the assessment and fishing because everyone's going through such a volatile time. The training is still critical, but in general, we would say that you know assessment exercises are good once a month, at least once a quarter, followed up by training and reinforcement. Um, we talked about the stick and the carrot, and are you collecting info that will continue to show a need and improvement? Are you uh, keeping your audiences engaged? This is also something we'll help you with. I'll show you. Customized content that we have now in our training is one of our approaches. Huge differentiator. That's really, we're the only one on the market now that has that. And I'll show you that uh, visually here in a minute. So that being said, some key takeaways. We wrap this section up and then getting in, get into our approach. And Owen, please let me know if there's any questions online too that we are, are part that we can uh, dive into some of those if you, unless you want to save them to the end. So being more effective, I think a security awareness training is more than just a check the box compliant activity. Our approach is all right. There's plenty of customers that are still in that phase, and that does it for them. That's not to say that that's wrong for every customer. Our approach is that's not effective enough. That's our philosophy. We want to have the adults train and be part of the culture and the, and the security of the company. Thoughtful planning, application of best practices, ongoing attention are keys to success. Again, that CSM team will help you guide through that with best practice. Engaging the stakeholders in the C-suite, the boardroom, and beyond. And you will see uh, the integration with that VAP report from the, the Intel that, uh, I'll show you that in a couple of minutes, how that is really specific to boardroom conversations to arm your security teams, your CISOs that have to go report to the board. It'll really arm them well with results of the training and then what uh, threats are coming into your organization. Um, so that's critical for top-down buy-in and participation. Don't minimize the end users. I know I've said that probably 10 or 12 times, but forgive me, but it's critical as their active attention and participation are essential. We're talking about a continuous uh, uh, program. This sounds kind of corny, cybersecurity heroes aren't born, they're made, and that's true. It's a cultural change, it's behavior change. Know your metrics and use data and anal uh, analysis to guide the information. So hopefully that's a good, when we do these workshops in person, this is probably an hour of the first, we, we, we set these up for two hours with lunch in there too. We spend an hour diving into more examples and everything too. So this virtual version 
hopefully you get that this gives you a good some thoughts to keep in mind. And then again, the main point is here we have resources to help you through these in, in deeper dives, and we can certainly set up follow-ups for this as well. Okay, metrics. I talked about getting buy-in. Here are some key metrics that will help end users understand and get over that hurdle that they are not part of the security of the company if you're if you're dealing with that. Email by far, by far, by far is the absolute number one threat vector. And I may be preaching to the choir, but this quantifies it. 95% of all breaches start with attacks targeting people using email. And this is not just proof point saying this, this is the sources listed at the bottom from Verizon's, Verizon's data breach investigation report that they put out every year. And the key thing that I really get out of this is a couple years ago, this was 91%. Two years ago, it was 92. Last year, it was about 92 and a half, 93, and it's 94 now. So the point being is that number one threat vector is not going away it's getting more number one because right? it's so much easier for those uh, threat actors to target people. And everybody kind of knows that, but that quantifies it. A lot of end users don't realize this. Security teams do, but when you convey this to end users, it's an eye opener. So that's a resource there. We have a ton of resources to back that up as well. We have the ability and the luxury being a global company and seeing all that email traffic. CISOs are thirsty for our information, which leads to that number two point where we have the ability to poll them, they list end user behavior as one of their number, if not their number one concern. It's a powerful statement when you come, when you can come with the tool to show not only the email security side, but then also how effective is our, is our training and our security awareness program that number links together. We have the number one threat, or the number one email protection and threat intel library by far. I've said it before, north of 20% of the email uh, traffic globally, we see that, our advanced persistent threat team, we have, uh, and we also have north of 150 security analysts sitting in our Sunnyvale headquarters that are constantly analyzing emerging threats, getting that information back to customers and utilizing that in how we develop our security tools and our security awareness training uh, content and updates. 91% of those threat uh, breaches could have been prevented through behavior change and training. So these four bullet points, I always go to these, these are key critical impactful ones when you're trying to sell a program. So it's always good to quantify and have metrics to, to back up your point. So hopefully those are useful. I mentioned a couple of minutes ago, some of the other resources that we have, these are certainly available. Um, this link will feed on this presentation. These are easily available right on ProofPoint's website. This state of the fish, just an overview, was a report that we put out in um, uh, Legacy Wombat Days. We've published that for years and years and years. This is an industry accepted global state, basically a global standard of what's the state of how end users interact with phishing campaigns. It has, we interview hundreds of thousands of um, security teams, InfoSec people, uh, CISOs, end users to see what their actual knowledge level is. And you will be shocked at some of the, uh, the, the lack of knowledge of the general end user of what phishing is, what ransomware is, what malware is and how, um, uh, threat actors are using that to attack them as their number one threat. So great resource there. User risk report that goes a little bit um, uh, into some more detail and beyond the fish is exactly what it says. That really expands from that state of fish to what other threat factors are out there from social media to, I mentioned a couple of these a little while ago, mobile device traveling uh, outside the office, international travel, uh, public Wi-Fi, et cetera. So great, great resources. Okay, so I mentioned, I've talked a lot about the integration and why proof point. Let's visualize this for you so you can see this. Let me walk you down a path here too, and uh, this should make sense and really kind of bake in our approach versus some of our competitors. And I should say, I'm going to refer and reference some of our competitors by name. This is by no means meant to dis uh, disparage them. They're companies, they're uh, Gartner Quadrant companies. They have their place in the market just like we do. I'm only going to reference them as a frame of reference for you from our approach versus their approach. And some might fit better than others for different companies. Okay, so there's a lot on this slide, but just focus on the top left quadrant. I mentioned our core security tools, email security tools from our from ProofPoint's legacy. Protection in that big square block is, think of that as our secure email gateway. Targeted attack protection, I know I'm going through this again, but it's good to hear a couple of times. Targeted attack protection or TAP, 
That is where we identify what threats, what actual real world threats are coming into your organization and who they're going to. And then threat response auto pull. Let's think of that as a remediation. If we see something, that's where we can yank it and pull it out of everyone's inbox for the sake of today's conversation. The integration with the security awareness training is really between that TAP tool. So I'm going to show you how we do that here in a minute. So that's just a visualization where this kind of fits into the whole proof point portfolio. When you look at um, talking about, before we dive into that whole integration, I want to just define the security awareness platform for you. So customary legacy um, security awareness platforms had two sides, if you will. You had the assessment side or the phishing campaigns, and I'll show you some other ones we have. And then you have the training and the education um, side. So if you cut it right in half, those are the two major parts of any security awareness platform. First kind of assessment that came to market was simulated phishing. You're all aware of that. Phishing campaigns. We have ours called ThreatSim. Cofence has one. Uh, no before has one as well too. So and there's sorry, 10 or 12 other really good effective ones out there too. These are the major players in the market. You probably if you're evaluating, you're probably evaluating one of these as well too. So that's the simulated phishing assessment side. We took it a step further a while ago, even with legacy Wombat, and put in place a knowledge base. We call it cyber strength. We've been the industry leader on this. We've had this for years and years and years. This is what I mentioned a little while ago. This is a really a um, knowledge based assessment. So the difference between phishing and knowledge base is if I if I get a phishing email in my inbox and I don't click on it, if it's part of a test, the administrator will see that I passed, I didn't click on it, I'll get a passing grade. The assumption can be made that I really knew everything about that phishing email and I, but it doesn't really, to find that I recognize that as potential. I may have just gotten lucky and didn't click on it. But I would not have gotten any training in that aspect. Where knowledge-based assessments or our cyber strength comes in, we have several hundred questions in this library. You can parse those and break them down. So for instance, if I get a dangerous URL in a phishing campaign, I don't click on it. I will not get training. If I have a 20 question quiz on dangerous URLs and I get four out of 20, that will give that administrator a completely different outlook of my knowledge base, and I will get training in that scenario. Most of our customers now, I would say anecdotally, probably 80% to 85% of our new customers are using this assessment as a baseline. A lot of our current customers are going back and using, using that to refresh their baseline and, and um, do another evaluation. Of the yeah. So I'm sorry, somebody have it? It's, uh, Somebody unmuted nope. it. Somebody, yep, go ahead. Sorry, can you hear me now? I can, yeah, Aaron, go ahead. All right. Sorry, guys, I was having some audio issues. And uh, yeah, it, we can't really uh, overstate the importance of that knowledge based assessment. Um, you know, it, it really goes beyond phishing. And if uh, I would encourage everybody to go out to Proofpoint's website and read the Beyond the Fish report. Um, obviously, email is the number one threat vector, but um you know in these current times when people are on social media constantly especially when they can't have you know personal interactions um and you know they're on home networks and web filters might not be what they were at work um you know people are surfing the internet it's so important to educate people uh on the dangers beyond phishing so i uh, just want to kind of enforce that point there thank you and again, for everybody out there, Aaron has, has been with uh, his legacy, just like I was, and seen this. He has helped, I, you're probably countless customers, Aaron, that you've helped, and you've seen that that adoption rate in this knowledge base assessment to you know, just confirm your point again, too. It's, it's, yeah, it really, it really has increased over the past uh, couple of years. Great. Thank you very much. Great to know. Okay, so that's the, that's the evolution of this. We're fishing to knowledge base that we had. Uh, and I mentioned, uh, no before has, has dipped their toe in the water here. They have a um, small library that they're trying to uh, deploy, but by far, again, we we have the overwhelming library of questions on this too. Now, this third one is really, frankly, where the cool stuff begins and all of our competition stops. We could not do this third assessment as Wombat because again, we didn't sit, we weren't an email security uh, tool, proof point is. This is where we get into that VAP report or very attack person report that I mentioned in the blue slides. We show you how this takes, uh, really is transforming the industry and a huge impact for you as customers. So the content, how do you identify the right content for users? Do different users receive different content? 
VAP report is produced in a graph. This is an actual one that we produced for a customer. This is a report that we got out of the TAP tool or targeted attack detection in the, you know, in the email security tool. You can see along the bottom uh, line of that graph, it, it, or it, uh, it uh, classifies the different kind of threats that were coming into this organization. Along the vertical axis, it shows who is getting attacked by what. There's a couple key elements in here. Vert a, this information is extremely powerful to know in its own right, but then it's a huge eye opener when you're trying to get buy into an organization or your decision makers. If you ask your people who you think the very attack person is or the most attack person in the organization, 99 times out of 100, people are going to say probably the CEO, CFO, CIO, somebody, right? Every time I see these, it's always somebody you never expect. In this case, it's an executive assistant based in, a, in one of their Chinese locations today. We've had countless number of these. We did one for uh, an auto manufacturer and it turned out to be a random person and we were presenting to the uh, senior leadership. They had no idea who the guy was. Well, it turned out that he was talking on um, social media. He was a project manager that had information on the key fobs, the automated key fobs for the cars that they were producing too. So obviously uh, uh, a criminal had found that of interest and they were trying to get access in and compromise his account. They, uh, they were on a cloud-based email system. So that was a big eye opener and it was a deployment immediately too. So that's what this looks like sitting by itself. Now, when you take it into training, you can take this and correlate this, this executive assistant may need some consumer credential phishing training module because she probably didn't know she was getting fished on this. Um, now, these are things that we're stopping, but they're targeted to her or him and said, that that buy-in from that end user will be exponentially elevated if they know that they are getting specifically targeted. The other thing is now you can tailor your training around that and not give everybody just kind of blanket training what you think they might need trained on. You can highlight these groups of this group of users and get them the specific while you're also going on uh, and getting pe other people specific training based on common threats coming into your organization. Hopefully that makes sense. And if there's any, there's might be some questions around that, you can certainly ask those now or we can go through that. But that's really where the integration came in. That's the power of Proofpoints Threat Intel with that, with the um, security awareness training. Again, visually, this is where it integrates. Secure email gateway, targeted detection or attack protection or tap, security awareness training. That's visually, again, that integration point. Okay. So, now, here's another function or feature that is extremely valuable in our approach and our platform. We launched a, a product called Clear, which is another advantage take on Proofpoints Threat Intel. And what this does in a nutshell is gives the end user a button on their email ribbon to be able to report a suspicious looking email if they get one in their inbox. And, you know, some things do get through. There's nothing is completely 100% infallible. So if they see something, whether it's a, a, a phishing email from a test or a real world malicious test, they can click on that. And the integration between Proofpoints, Threat Intel, TAP and TRAP starts communication. So the big so what here is it can take that reported email and bounce it off of our immense Threat Intel library, evaluate it, package it into a very concise um, pre-done package for the security team. So it takes a lot of that manual work off the security team because it's going back and say, hey, Bill Hallett reported this. Uh, it's gonna go through a cycle of evaluation within the uh, PSAT or security awareness platform. And then it's gonna go talk to um, the, the, the abuse inbox in TRAP Trap is going to evaluate and say, hey, we, we don't recognize this. This is something that actually did get through. Yank it out of everyone's inbox. If it is something that, uh, that uh, Proofpoint knows and understands, it's going to give a message back to AD end user, thanking them for their participation. And then the security team and say, hey, th this, is, this is okay, or this is something you might want to look at. But that's the kind of the power of that. We couldn't do that as Wombat. We had an evaluation tool, but it was really, the, the threat intelligence was built on our history of reported emails. 
it wasn't able to take advantage of all the threat intel that Proofpoint sees that we're stopping and tracking every day. Um, other competitors have kind of dipped their toes into this a little bit. They have some, but there's nobody that has the, the volume of threat intel that we do. So this is one of the biggest um, reasons why Proofpoint said, yeah, we're going to go and acquire Wabac because we see this integration flow. Okay, so those are the assessments and some of the integration points we talked about. Let me uh, go through some of the training. As I mentioned, we talked about the security awareness platforms being two sides. The assessments, again, phishing, uh, knowledge base with the cyber strength, and then that uh, VAP report. I look at that as the third assessment that we have. Now let's look at the training side. Here's our philosophy. Okay, customize, this is um, creating a customized content or you're using something out of the box. This is something we launched in uh, Q4 of last year. We're an industry leader on that, and I'll tell you, tell you why it's so critical now, too. We're launching, or we have launched, additional modules specific to the global threat right now with uh, COVID. Uh, in addition, all of our other training modules are completely customized. So the differentiator is here, is if you are an administrator running a program, you can go into our modules, click on content now, within a couple minutes have a customized content, a customized module. We'll also give you guidance through that to make sure that it's still effective and you're still getting the reporting and the effectiveness out of it. But some of our competitors offer customization, but you have to submit a statement of work and there's a charge to it, a rather healthy charge to it. It takes a week or two, probably you know two, two weeks to get back. And then if you wanna customize it the following week, again, you have to repeat that cycle. This is completely self-service customization. This is a huge, huge differentiator convenience. I've been on several customer webinars. Um, we have a, um, a customer organization that this was just groundbreaking for them too. I can't, and Aaron, if you wanna add any uh, flavor to this as well. Um, we've been on webinars showing them how to do this and people were doing it in the background in a couple minutes and they're like, this is awesome, phenomenal. So something to keep in mind. Yeah, Bill, you mentioned earlier, um, you know, knowing your environment, knowing your culture, and that's really where this comes in, you know, uh, not everything we say applies to every single organization because everyone is unique. So this is a way you can put your own flavor in there, uh, your own branding, your own messaging in there that really resonates with your employees. Um, and it really takes the training to the to the next level, really. And and really impacts their lives um, because they see something they see, you know, day to day from you know, your organization's messaging. Yeah, great point, great point. And again, you know, I get, we came out of Carnegie Mellon as Wombat, so there's always been a huge emphasis on how adults learn, effective learning programs too. So our philosophy has always been to have really high quality content. Some of our competition has gone a different route and have tons of volume of content, and that's fine. But customers, some customers love that. Um, we've said, we built all our content in-house, so it's a very consistent, experience for the end users and it's also easier to you don't have multiple different apis to try and integrate and report on that's why our reporting is so but that was our philosophy we wanted to remember we probably have about 100 modules there's 35 or 36 different key topics but then there's series of modules behind that that you can build now we take this to the customization level to aaron's point you can really really make it tailor fit for your organization or your individuals who are getting based on that VAP report that you so just different philosophies well okay, customization proof point security awareness this gets into a little detail too um, there's uh, I also have a couple of video resources that if we have time at the end I'll show you but I'm, I'm, I'm going to uh, make sure we cover all the content before I go back and do that but simulated attacks and knowledge assessments are fully customizable you can change add remove text images you can put I was your administrator, I could put my face in there and say, hey, Bill Cut, you know, something, however you want to make it, right? Customize all security awareness materials. And again, based on our adult learning principles and guidance, we will give you kind of yellow lights and say, hey, if you change this that much, you might be losing this effectiveness in this module. Still not going to stop you, but it'll give you some, some guidance and recommendations. Customize messages back to users based on the email they reported. I always think this is so critical because, you know, customers will say, look, we don't have 30 or 40 hours of training available to train our people every year. So the time that people are gonna to devote to their training program is critical to make sure it's impactful. 
this is one absolute uh, critical way or imperative way you can do that too. So if you're going to put together a, hey, we we're going to train our employees four hours a year, six hours a year, you want to make sure that that's impactful. So that again speaks to our difference in philosophy. We would rather have high quality hand built uh, material in coordination with a global leading education uh, uh, institution versus buying uh, our content and having five to 600 modules that is difficult to find what right module it is. It's different for the end users and you really don't get the reporting out that's consistent so you can evaluate your, your assessment or your training program as it matures. So just points, points to consider. Okay, we've covered a lot here. Here's some stuff that customers give back to us as well too. Uh, this is gonna be kind of redundant, a little bit what we've talked about, but the customers are saying the same thing. So um, it's short and focused. We haven't mentioned this though, five to 15 minutes, right? It's not, we, now we typically, we, we didn't launch our initial training programs with video. So I'm gonna make two points and contradict myself a little bit, but we came to market with no video because we believed in uh, engaged, uh, interactive training modules that keep the user engaged. So for instance, you can't click on the beginning of a training video, go walk your dog and come back in a half an hour and click it done and the administrator gets a report that, hey, Bill, watch the video. But all I know is I started and stopped it. This gives you evaluation through throughout the training modules. So really, I'm gonna say, force the end user to be engaged and learn the concept versus just watching a video. It's always been our philosophy. Now, we have launched video supporting material this year and last year. Uh, I think we're up to about eight modules now, six or eight modules, but it's it's to complement existing modules, it's not to replace it. And, and it's built where it's still short chunks of information. So you watch a one minute or a minute and a half video, then you're reintroduced to the concept and material, you take an assessment, you go another minute of, of video, so it's, it, you still maintain that integrity of reporting and evaluation for the administrator to know how effective that training uh, platform is being. That's one huge belief that we have in our, to make our program effective. Some people learn better from video. A lot of people are asking for it. So we've rolled that out in support. Next point, helps users learn valuable skills they can use in real life. Um, that, um, I know Aaron would love to speak to that. He always does. Customers always say that. That's a big point. Take this home especially now, use this stuff at home, inside and outside of work. I've said that several times, but you know, I can't emphasize that enough. Yeah, I actually uh, <laughs> assigned my 12-year-old uh, a few modules recently. Uh, you know, it's, it's effective, um, you know, in, in days and times where our kids are on phones and on laptops, my third grader got an iPad from school. It's important that they know how to be safe there. Um, you know, we can't protect them enough from a network perspective. Um, they have to have some skills and, and knowledge to, to protect themselves and, you know, in their case, protect their school or, you know, in my kid's case, when he's on his phone on our home network, protect our network. Right on, yep. Um, everybody knows how important that is, especially nowadays. Thank you, Aaron. Um, so yeah, I, again, we'll, we'll say this, running a targeted personalized program, this bottom paragraph here, um, for the lack of skills or knowledge. That goes back to those assessments, that knowledge-based assessment, how powerful that is now, the adaption rate to that. And then administer the program so only the right users get the right education at the right time versus just kind of guessing. That ties into that knowledge-based assessment, also ties into that DAP and using ProofPoints Threat Intel to do it. And I will say, if you're not a ProofPoint customer, this is not to push that and sell it, it's just to say that information, this is the way we are using that threat intel. You can certainly do that as a POC, not being a ProofPoint customer, and get that initial report and use that to senior management or use it with information as you're considering your security awareness program. If you are a ProofPoint customer um, and you haven't done that yet, resources with uh, engineers and things like that. Bigger topic, but follow up, but that's there for you as well too. So. Okay. Um, educate your users on cybersecurity threats. Just kind of review here and we'll get to some of the key takeaways and the questions. I'm gonna leave some time for questions. Simulated phishing, in-person training. A lot of customers will do that where they'll kick it off with a workshop and roll out the metrics. Some people have external consultants for integrity and things come in that do that. Uh, emails to users to announce the program. 
abuse mailbox that gets into that clear uh, integration with the security team, computer-based training. So most successful clients are doing all the above and more to capture their user's attention and enact behavior change. Obviously, our solution is built around this with a continuous training program uh, with metrics, getting buy-in, et cetera, not just here's a video to watch and good luck next year. Are you measuring to determine success? That's one thing we really haven't talked about, the measurement tools or reporting tools. Extremely robust, the most robust on the, on the market. Successful phishing attacks per month, um, number of malware mediations per month, click rate of simulated fish. We talked about that hopefully coming down. Report rate going up, but in a managed sense with that whole clear loop. And then topical knowledge levels. We don't have to guess on research. We are seeing what the emerging threats with Sharon DeGrippo, Ryan Caliber, our whole emerging threat team. We've built that in and we see that actual email threats coming in. Number of ways, you know, uh, product or product outside the, the product to measure success have reduced their successful, some of our clients has reduced successful phishing attacks and malware infections from up to 90%. We have case studies that um, reinforce that every week. Okay, resources. Starting an onboarding training, online community of thousands of other security awareness customers. We have a robust uh, online community that is very active and very robust. Tons of resources in there. Dedicated human resource customer success manager. You've spoken with him today, Aaron and his team. They are based in Pittsburgh, where our whole ESAT or the Proofpoint Security Awareness team sits in Pittsburgh. It's the old uh, Wombat team. There's 250 of us there. Um, and I sit right next to his team as well, too. So very, very robustly supported there. Best practices documentation, customizable scheduler, expert team to back you up and run your program. Point being, you are supported and backed up by a very knowledgeable team. Uh, these are some questions here that might be in the thing we, I mentioned here. How frequently phishing training assessments? This is our recommendation every four to six weeks. However, I will say again, in this environment, uh, we're actually recommending to our current customers, like maybe it's a good time to back off a little bit on the phishing and assessments. However, probably a really good time to deploy some specified training on the COVID threats. So they are there. Um, so that's our philosophy now, but in general, that's our, our usual recommendation. Internally helping um, security awareness advocates to help them with their program. Some people hire consultants. Some people just have a very organized approach and spend time with the CSM team to craft that communication, but it is. It's just communication, understanding the why up front. Um, and this has been some of the, um, the reactions. I, I went through that, what people love. Okay, so next steps, call to actions before we get into any questions and answers. You can certainly request a demo for the content, um, especially some of the new content. You can take it uh, through your CDW reps. They can certainly reach out to them. They can arrange a customized demo for you with our, um, our channel team. A marker can help arrange that with your CDW reps and our, uh, our PSAT team here in Pittsburgh. And then one of the more critical ones there too for any current proof point customers on the line, that BAP report, if you have not done it, or if you are a uh, perspective and you're considering some of our uh, solutions, we can set this up as a uh, proof of concept with our sales engineers. It doesn't take very long. It doesn't interrupt your production email environment, um, but that's available to, to get that snapshot, if you will. And it's a big, big eye opener. So I'll turn it back over to the CDW team real quick to wrap things up. We'll get into Q&A. Right on, and thank you very much, Bill, for that uh, amazing presentation. Um, I'm just taking a look at the chat window. We don't have any questions at this moment. Um, I'm just going to give uh, a couple minutes. If anybody has any questions, uh, please feel free to use the um, the chat window. Hold on, I'm looking at the Q&A. OK, so uh, we do have a question here. Just give me a second to get this ready. So most uh, small and medium-sized business is open to run phishing training uh, once a year. How do you show them uh, that an ongoing program is better? Well, I think yeah. Alex. Yeah. Alex, OK, Alex, yeah, very, very good question. Very, uh, that's a, it's a uh, great, great question. So. Uh, on that aspect, our philosophy is the continuous uh, training program too. And I think it gets back to the metrics. We talked about 
um, educating some of those end users as a first step. That, that beyond the FISH report and the state of the FISH report um, is a really, really good place to start because when you, when you open that up and show that um, a lot of end users don't know what malware is or don't know what ransomware is. Some of your end users might. However, that really looks at why a continuous program is important. And it really goes back, the second point is that behavior change aspect. Um, we, our belief is that it's not really effective to have once a year training because you're gonna forget it. It's not, you're gonna understand and you're gonna know the concept, but you're gonna forget that behavior. If you get an assessment every month or every quarter, it kind of keeps you on your toes for lack of a better word, and you're gonna get reinforced. I mean, we have to take it. We, we do that internally as well. We take it on a consistent basis to reinforce that behavior, to take that pause every now and then to, to not click on something and go directly to a website proactively, that type of thing. Um, so hopefully that helps. It's just our belief in a continuous uh, behavior change process. Yeah, and uh, and Alex, I, I would, um, you know, you could show them stats, you could show them research, and we have plenty of that. I would ask them straight up, have the numbers decreased over the past couple of years when you've been running annual training? Um, you know, those that slide a few back uh, that Bill showed on, on different things that you can measure to, uh, or you can look at to measure a successful program, like number of reimage machines and malware and reported emails. Um, my bet is that those numbers have been pretty stagnant. Um, and if you want to change those, uh, you know, getting this information in front of your users is really the the only option, or, or you're going to be in the same place that you were. Great question, Alex. Thank you. All right, everybody, that seems to uh, wrap up the Q&A session uh, for this webinar. Um, I'd like to thank Proofpoint uh, for delivering this uh, incredible webinar on security awareness training. Uh, special thanks um, uh, to Bill, Aaron, Margaret, and the team uh, for the people who have who've joined in. Um, if you have any questions uh, about anything from today's webinar, if you'd like to see a demo of any of these products or go through a POC, please reach out to your CDW account rep uh, and they will uh, get one of our security architects with you on the phone and we'll start the process going. But uh, I guess that uh, is the conclusion of our webinar for today. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. Uh, please be safe, and um, please keep your eye open for uh, additional CDW uh, webinars. Uh, thank you very much.